If you are watching this video, uh, there are two options. You are looking for answers how to study Japanese kanji or Japanese in general. Or you already bought my book, which is called 100 plus tools and techniques of, to memorize Japanese kanji. Before I speak about my book, I wanted to show you something. For example, a number of these wonderful books. Genki. Then uh, this set, uh, this is for more advanced level Japanese. It's quartet, it's uh, yeah, quartet, and uh, quartet, quartet, and Tobira. Wonderful books for advanced level. Also, great books for beginners, beginners and uh, intermediate, could be as Japanese for example. Wonderful books. And then we come to oh, oh, yo, 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 yo. Minano Nihongo. And this is for the first year, for the second year, you see, so many great books. And finally, for the third advanced level. These, uh, these books can give you lots lots of pleasure under some condition that or us, not only you, but us in general. They give a lot of pleasure if we know Kanzi, at least the minimum, but approximately 2,500, 3,000 Kanzi if we know that, we can we can work with these books, no no problem. And also, literature. You see, I wanted to show there is literature on the shelves, Japanese. There are a lot of manga, and uh, <laughs> some other part of my apartment that I can show you. So all of this is possible. It become it can become like the source of. Uh, an endless pleasure if we know kanji and also the second stage if we can speak properly i mean pronunciation but let's speak now we can we can speak about my book a little bit first of all i introduce myself my name my, my name is yuri Bisarab. i graduated from kiev linguistics uh, university and uh, i speak french german and uh, a little bit spanish italian but Two years ago, I decided to take this challenge and to study Japanese. And like you, I was facing this issue that a kanji can have five, ten readings, and it's impossible to remember when, how to, how to memorize that uh, that information. It's just a nightmare. So, I decided to find the solution for at least for for me, and then. It turned out a solution which can serve also for you. So I decided to collect, first of all, memorizing techniques or techniques how to study, how to learn kanji in general. In, in YouTube, there is there are tons of those who share their knowledge, who share that experience. And of course, I appreciate that. But everything mostly comes to cramming. Anki. Some others, many others, just uh, cramming, 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 and this is very, very boring. So I decided to change a little bit. Even these um, uh, these apps that I used for, let's say, space repetition apps, I found that the best of them is in um, in the dictionary, which I will show to you, Jisho dictionary. It's uh, for iPad and also for uh, iPhone. It looks like this. Yeah, okay, let me close it. And it looks like this, Jisho. Okay. It's a very good dictionary where we have, we, uh, there is space repetition, but we can choose for which words and how many times and also should we use those words? Should we train them if we know them? So in other words, we have more liberty. And more liberty means we have more energy. We are not cramming them. And we are more creative in this sense. 
So, and uh, this is about those tools which I describe in the book, which are available ev everywhere, everywhere, available. Maybe 10, 15 of them are mentioned in the book. 100 plus tools and techniques to memorize Japanese kanji. That's the name of the book. They are mentioned, but I propose quite a different, a little bit different approach in order to be more creative and to have uh, not to have this boring cramming all the time. Then, uh, now I will speak more concrete, uh, concretely about uh, uh, the book. In the book I gave also, first of all, there is introduction. Several important notions, issues, which are like on memorizing, memory, interest, etc. You will find them in the introduction, in the first part of the book. But there is something which is extremely important, and that is about association. Because without associating words, or it's better to say in, in a case of Kanzi, with, if we don't know how to associate components or bind components in a creative way, if we don't know that, we will lose. We will not, we will not remember anything. We will not be able to, <laughs> to think, to learn, and to be happy from learning just because of this little thing of association. In general, I can say that the hu a human is association. We think in associations. Every language is a number of associations. Grammar, that's about the association. Words, that is also about associations. And the same with Kanzi. There are two techniques which I believe have something to do, or a lot to do, with uh, memorizing, or it's better to say, remembering or learning Japanese Kanzi. Two techniques. One of them was developed by James Heisig, quite a known James W. Heisig. Heisig, Heisig, it's quite a German name. And the other one is uh, by Valery Kurinsky. Valery Kurinsky. Valery Kurinsky is from Ukraine. James Heisig is uh, from the US. Both are philosophers. Uh, in addition uh, to being philosopher, Valery Kurinsky was a musician, poet, um, wrote a book, Autodidactics, a very important uh, book for uh, those people who learn languages and not only, let's say, associations. We need to remember this word. So, their association techniques, I give them very briefly in the book. They are very close, but if to somehow generalize them, they are, uh, they are about how to build, let's say, fabulous, fantastic, paradoxical associations. Associations of what? Of components, Kanzi components. Then, if we do that, if you learn these techniques, remembering 2,000, 3,000, 5 or 10,000 Kanzi will not be a problem for us, because it will give us lots of happiness. In the book, I give examples how to associate. Here in the video, I just wanted to underline that it's very, very important. But just to set a little difference, James Heisig speaks about building kind of some kind of a story. I'm trying to find uh, some, uh, let me, f uh, uh, a story of uh, around Kanzi. Let us take, for example, this Kanzi. You will definitely recognize this. Uh, let me show right here. According, uh, here's a kanzi, okay? Op, op, op. Here's a kanzi. This kanzi means, as probably some of you know, or some of you will learn, a cat. This kanzi consists of three components. One of them, this, it's a dog. 
The other one is grass or flowers or plants. Let's say grass here. And this one means field. Usually rice field, but we will write just field. So this is this is the kanji and how to apply this association technique of uh, let's say James Isaac. We'll start with this. He suggests to build some kind of a story around all of these things, of these components, with these components. And we have to remember that this kanji means cat. So we need to understand this is this cat, means cat. So somehow we need to connect or build mnemonic story. I don't like the word mnemonic, but anyways, he speaks about that very often. We need to build a mnemonic story that is related to cat and which will, which will always remind us about that cat. Okay, I am. Uh, let's, let's try to do it. So the dog, for example, comes to the field. Field, we have field, eats some grass and turns, turns into the cat. If you can imagine this, this is <laughs> a dog, let's say any dog, <laughs> comes to the field, special field, only for dogs <laughs> that can turn into that field, eat some grass, some kind of grass, and uh, they turn <laughs> into cats, come out as cats. If you remember the story, then you will remember definitely this kanji. This is how, in a nutshell, the technique of James Hasek works. So build a story. Of course, I made it more <laughs> in a sense, in certain sense, I made it a story of uh, very close to the technique of Valery Kurinsky. But they are, they are very close, in fact. James Hasek doesn't speak, doesn't call it paradoxical. What I did, I used, in fact, the technique of Valery Kurinsky to demonstrate the, uh, the technique of James Heisig. Okay, let me apply the technique of Valerian Kurinsky to the same thing. Usually, Kurinsky technique is very good for two elements, for two components, because then it will be very easy to build uh, some kind of a paradoxical, paradoxical association. Uh, how to do it? We divide the character, the same character, which means cat, we divide into two parts. In this case, one is dog, but this part, if to put these parts together, in they can mean also seedling. Separate, in separate, they mean grass and field, but together they mean seedling. Seedling. Okay. Now, to make it uh, paradoxical, we need to change something. We need to do something with the dog and seedlings and uh, to have, as a result, a uh, cat. Let's imagine, uh, very easy, in this case, we imagine the dog finds seedlings. You know, the dogs love to, uh, to sniff something in the grass. So, the dog comes to the, to the lawn sniffs out something, some kind of uh, seedlings, finds some, some seedlings, eats them, and by the end of the day, or immediately, <laughs> turns in, into a cat. So you see, they're very close to each other, both James Heisig technique and Valery Kurinsky technique. I would say that Kurinsky technique saves time and uh, but it's mostly it's very good it works very good with two elements we divide the character into uh, into two two elements or two components but with three or more components it's better to use uh james heisig technique but make it more like adapted to uh, what kurinsky proposes to make it paradoxical now in addition to these association techniques that I named, I found out that if we um, assign some 
characters that we know from movies, documentary, uh, not documentaries, movies, TV shows, uh, some cartoons, if we assign them as representatives of, uh, of components of uh, Kanzi, then they can do a lot of work for us. So, we have a character with the meaning cultivate, consisting of components. This, this component, component means earth, this means stand up, and this one means uh, mouth. But we uh, find uh, some characters from uh, cartoons or TV shows that will represent, maybe because of some similarities, physical sim similarities, or maybe because they're close to something, some feature that would, would keep us uh, like remembering that this character represents that uh, component, Kanzi component. So for this one, we choose the farmer, famous farmer from uh, Sean the Sheep cartoon. And uh, for stand up, we, we take Ernie from Sesame Street. And here we, we take for mouth, we take Grouch, who will represent uh, also the mouth itself. So, and we need to come out. We need to associate them in a way that will it will take us to the meaning of uh, cultivate. Just imagine, now it's easy, it will be easier because you take the farmer, you, you imagine that farmer, imagine that farmer hires Ernie and Gr Grouch to cultivate the, the field around. <laughs> okay, just imagine, it's already funny. So, this is the way I wanted to show how like uh, how the association can work in this way, like James Heisig I uh, showed to you with Valery Kurinsky, and also I proposed my my approach. I think it's easier and can work, but for that we need to find a lot of characters, very good characters. It's better to have funny characters that will represent certain components radicals and components in uh, in this book by the way radicals i give the radicals in the book also i give uh, 270 uh, plus components in the book and uh, you can start uh, using you using them already what else are, is there in the book i give this joyokanzi index of 2239 kanzi I, I updated them because um, this is the list of like everyday use uh, usage kanji recommended by the Ministry of Education of Japan. Uh, first of all, they uh, recommended this list, came up to this list uh, like in 2000. Then there were some updates in 2010. There were some updates a little bit later. But anyways, they added a little bit. So to the list. Uh, of uh, originally it was the list of 2139 I think or 36 uh, kanji now it's a little bit bigger but what is good that I updated also translation to English uh, I, I think it will be better comparing to the translation I found in uh, internet so it's updated you can use it right away you can put uh, Kanzi from that list, from this index, on study cards. I describe them in a certain uh, chapter which is dedicated uh, to study cards. I describe how to do that. You can start using it also to prepare dictionaries. I explain them in Article 15 on uh, dictionaries, on chain reading technique and how to prepare dictionaries, Kanzi dictionaries, Japanese Kanzi dic dictionaries for that. So this is a very good list, a very good instrument to use. Also, so this is uh, this is what what is, what is related to kanzi in the book. In the end, I give also pronunciation. Pronunciation is not related to kanzi yet, but because there is a big shortcoming in pronunciation, how it is explained in different books, or it is not explained at all. 
or they say that it is like in English, or it is like in some other language. It is not so because it's different. And I will make a separate video on pronunciation, on correct Japanese pronunciation. If you have questions, you can um, uh, put those uh, questions to me. This book will be issued maybe in a month, maybe in two. The, it will be, I don't know, I, I have not decided how it will be sold, how to find the routes uh, to internet, to Amazon, Amazon and uh, to sell it there for this book to be, uh, uh, to be accessible to you, to those who learn currency. But I will inform in some way, I will inform probably under this video later on, on the developments. I mean, where to buy this book. Thank you for your attention. Bye bye. Good luck in learning uh, Japanese kanji. There are 100 and more techniques to do that. You will definitely uh, be able to do that.